Good afternoon everyone. Today our topic is a planetary computer. Presented by me, Ishika Ghosh, Rohit De and Shulogna De. First of all, I would like to thank our class teacher, Mr. Shomujit Khorai, for giving us the opportunity to work on this project. So let's have a quick look about our today's agenda. We're going to discuss about why we should use technology to save the environment. Data-driven agriculture, protecting deforestation, wildlife conservation, and finally the conclusion. So here we go. Imagine a system that can tell us about what exactly we should do to save our planet Earth. A system that can give us all the information about every tree and species on this planet and how we can use those data to make our planet better. Innovation hinges on our ability to see things differently. It means breaking boundaries and looking between the lines to solve some of the toughest challenges of the world. Although the future from an alternative perspective, planetary innovation is needed now more than ever. Because if we care about each other, we have to care about the planet we all call home. We human beings are now facing the most existential challenges we ever had. First of all, increasing population. Consider this, since I have been alive, the human population of the Earth has increased almost double. Our species now uses more than 70% land on Earth to produce food, power, and energy. These activities are transforming fundamentally the natural system that we all depend on. Secondly, the climate change. We are changing the climate in such a way that could have catastrophic impacts on our life. We have to figure out something that how can we mitigate and adopt the rapidly changing climate. We have to ensure resilient water supply of all the species on this planet. We are talking about a large scale of environmental concerns that involves world's biggest data challenges, world's biggest compute challenges, and world's biggest algorithmic challenges. With the help of artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithm, we believe we can do it. Here we will discuss some of the solutions of those problems using the technology of cloud computing, internet of things, and of course, artificial intelligence. So first of all, we're gonna discuss about the data-driven agriculture. Empowering farmers with di digital agricultural solutions. So first thing that comes to our mind is what is data-driven agriculture? Data-driven agriculture is nothing but collecting lots and lots of data from the farms using sensor. Then we could may make a map like this to identify the suppose the moisture level or the pH level of the farm where it is higher or where it is lower. So here comes the concept of the precision agriculture. That means we are using the essential things like pesticides and water in those spaces of the farm where it is actually needed. And we see the result that precision agriculture has shown to reduce costs as you were using pesticides more precisely. It improves yields and also ensures sustainability. The concept of data-driven agriculture was proposed uh, in late 80s, but because of its high cost of manual data collection, it has not yet been taken off. So here Microsoft come with its project, Farm Bits, AI age and IoT for agriculture in an affordable price. Their aim is to make an end-to-end system that enables seamless data collection and insights of agriculture that solves some problems like connectivity and database management system. Here we go with the first challenge. The cost of data-driven agriculture is higher because the farm connectivity. Connecting a whole farm is not a big, uh, not a small issue. Farmers' house are somehow connected to internet, but connecting the whole farm, 
when you seed the plants uh, on the plant the seeds on the farm sometimes a connection may occur but when the crops grow make canopies on the farm the connection losses so here we come with the solution we are using tv wide spaces instead of wifi signal to connect the whole farm now what is tv wide spaces you can think it like that this wifi connects our house the tv wide spaces is connecting the whole farm in such a way we are uh, browsing tv wide spaces through the air antennas we all have air antennas we will put a empty we will put the wifi signal in an empty tv channel and transmitted it through it and it will not interfere the existing cha channels as it is a very high frequency it has four times more coverage and propagation through trees canopies and crops of the farm so here is the second challenge that is limited resources if we have to build a map like this we have more one more sensors like uh, you know 10 meters away sensors the sensors are too costly so the question is how do we get the coverage of the whole farm with few number of sensors so here we come with the idea of drone we are using uavs that had camera in the bottom so we fly a drone that captures photos like this panoramic image and we use the sensor data as an interpolate using the artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithm and make this precision map now in the real world this connectivity problems are solved that we are using tv wide spaces and all that but now how can the farmer's house will be connected to the cloud so here they come with the technology of azure iot edge it can be run through offline it will store the data and temporarily upload it to the cloud and what is the uh, main uh, advantage of it it can be run offline so here is the whole process in a sort that how the total farm bit works first we put sensors strategically in the farm then we have drones then we have satellites microclimate forecasting and we can do all of the things besides that we have uh, ai ml models for our farms we have sample data visualization and the device management in our farm bits accelerator so here i will uh, request my friend shulogna to continue further over to you shulogna thank you thank you ishika now we are moving to our uh, presentation's next part that is how we can use technology to protect the trees from deforestation before elaborating this we have to know two top uh, another topics what is deforestation and what are the causes of deforestation now what is deforestation deforestation or forest clearance is the removal of a forest of or stand of the trees from land that is converted to non forest use next what is the causes of deforestation multiple factors either of human or natural origin cause deforestation the major cause of deforestation is agriculture agriculture causes the eight around 80% of deforestation and now the question is how does agriculture cause so much deforestation according to faq report 33% of agriculture caused deforestation is a consequence of subsistent agriculture such as local peasant agriculture in developing countries commercial or industrial agriculture causes around 40% of forest loss in the search for space to grow food fibers and biofuels and other 40% is comes from livestock now the next one is logging illegal logging occurs in all 
types of forest across all continents from Brazil to Indonesia, destroying nature and wildlife, taking away community livelihoods and destroying its trade. Illegal harvested wood finds its way into major consumption markets such as uh, USA and European Union, which further fuels the cycles. And the next is mining. The impact of mining on tropical forests is growing due to rising demand and high mineral prices. Mining projects are often accompanied by major infrastructure construction, such as roads, railway lines, and uh, power station putting further on forest and the last one is urbanization urbanization is one of the major human created reason of deforestation the proportional the population shift that is leading people to move from rural areas to urban areas is also contributing to deforestation this urban growth is which 68% of the world population is expected to live in cities by 2050 is leading to an exponential growth of housing and consumption sites. Now, next we are going to discuss how can I use AI to protect Amazon rainforest. In collaboration with Microsoft, Amazon also announced an initiative to protect the Amazon rainforest from reforestation and fires. They made a software named Previsia. Now the question is how Previsia works. Amazon uses satellite images of Brazil's Amazon rainforest and then stores them in the Azure cloud where Amazon AI algorithm detects an official roads and other risk factors of deforestation. The resulting output is visualized in a interactive map highlighting the high risk areas next then the information is collected as then here's a sample of interactive map the interactive map is highlighting the high risk factors but there is also a challenge imagery over tropical forests can be unreliable due to the abundance of clouds given the local weather condition but the solution is in this case, machine learning can be used to identify clouds in imagery and filter them out from time series data. One group of scientists solved this by using an unsupervised k-means clustering algorithm to initially identify clouds from satellite imagery and then performing additional refinement based on the entire time series. Here's another AI application is arised. Another AI application has helped to predict the carbon stocks and carbon dioxide emissions in the Peruvian tropical forest. When trees burn in forest fire, the carbon dioxide stored in them bring released and mixed in the nature, and this results in increase of CO2 in nature. So how can I uh, able to determine the CO2 level? It is possible to estimate the amount of carbon dioxide stock by measuring the height and structure of trees in the forest. This is typically done with airborne leader data, which gives us three-dimensional information by imagery. But here is also a challenge. Not all regions have leader measurement. What is the solution? One group of scientists proposed a method to solve this problem. The proposed method is, therefore, to use leader data as labor training data for random forest algorithm to predict the carbon stock from ordinary two-dimensional images taken by satellite. This is good since satellites have superior coverage of the tropical forest and make it possible to estimate the amount of carbon stock to a larger extent. This kind of information may enable better large-scale management of the forest, since it would help to identify particularly sensitive regions. On top of that, it decreases the amount of labor needed to retrieve the information. Instead, machine learning algorithm produce it automatically with the help of existing satellite imagery at a more cost-effective way. Now I would like to invite my friend Rohit for the further continuation of this presentation. Rohit, 
Over to you. Thank you, Sulagana. Now we are going to see how technology helps in wildlife conservation. So, what is wildlife conservation? Wildlife conservation is the practice of protecting plant and animal species and their habitats. As part of the world's ecosystem, wildlife provides balance and stability to nature's process. The goal of wildlife conservation is to ensure the survival of these species and to educate people on living sustainable with other species. Now, why it is important to conserve wildlife today? By conserving wildlife, we promote poll pollination and continuity of native plant species. Medi it also supports medicinal values. It preserves heritage and culture. Four, it promotes tourism attraction. Fifth, it protects and it protects the biodiversity and endangered species. Sixth, it protects ecological stability and balance. Seven, it can enhance food security. Eight, importance for identification of new plant and animal species for research. It serves as a preserve for future generations. Now, how IoT can solve our ecological issues? Technology can help to securely provide better real-time data to help monitor, manage, and even predict outcomes of the next poaching strike. With vastly improved animal sensors technologies, low-cost, long-range communications networks combined with IoT and analytics, we can effectively deploy solutions to enable protection programs to capitalize. Uh, modernization in technologies used for wildlife conservation. Uh, there is there are basic there are two basic uh, machine uh, sensors are used in wildlife conservation that are camera traps and acoustic sensor. Camera traps are remote devices equipped with a monitor motion or infrared sensor that automatically record image or videos. To uh, the decreasing cost gives. Researchers additional opportunities monitor and reach a, reach a large number of wildlife population. Now, at, what is acoustic monitoring? Ecologists and conservation researchers have a long history of using sounds to study wildlife, from identifying bird song by ear in the field to, to surveying bats with handheld detects, detectors to using state-of-the-art remote sound recorders to monitor the sound of animals and ecosystem. Now, here are the mechanism of the camera traps. Camera traps can provide data on exactly what species are, what, where are the species are and what they are doing and how large their populations are. Uh, also, it can uh, show that how species are interacting over space and time. The recent development of networked camera traps capable of sending images over phone or sa satellite network in near real time has provided a new tool in the fight against poaching. Camera traps are also being deployed to understand how humans and livestock interact with wildlife. Now here is the mechanism of acoustic monitoring. Uh, in acoust acoustic sensor used for passive acoustic monitoring generally consists of a sound recorder and a detector and a microphone. Acoustic monitoring can be used to study a broad variety of taxa, including birds, bats, marine mammals, amphibians, orthoptera, elephants, and some fish. Now, a re remote sensing with LiDAR. Uh, the remote sensing with LiDAR. The emerging technology of LiDAR offers a wealth of opportunities for ecology and conservation and research. Uh, the product of LiDAR is a 3D point cloud in which uh, is next slide. Chole. The product of LiDAR is a 3D point cloud in which each point represents a location hit by an immediate pulse. All point consists of XYZ coordinates allowing quantification of the 3D of the 3D structure of the target area, be it a forest canopy or a cliff face. LiDAR device uses a laser to produce and emit up to hundreds of thousands of light pulses in one second towards the scanning target. It is scanning the ground from the air with a laser, which gives it another common acronym 
ALS, airborne laser scanning. LiDAR data can be used to estimate carbon stocks, flood risk, erosion, and suitability of habitat for wildlife. Then, drone surveillance. National parks often cover thousands of square kilometers, making effective monitoring of all areas difficult. difficult. Here, drone technology and surveillance tech can help human rangers dramatically increase the range and effectiveness of the surveillance activities without having to physically deploy people to remote location. Now, how AI and ML cloud-based software coming to assistance? The first is AI image processing. Artificial intelligence uh, is the biggest strength lies in being able to proceed the vast amounts of information needed to identify and track the illegal wildlife trade. Second, uh, collaboration via cloud. Cloud-based tech helps expand the technology rapidly without the need to provision, operate, and maintain expensive physical infrastructure. Cloud technology also enables wide-scale accessibility, allowing organizations spread across vast geographical distance to share information quickly and easily. The third one is data analytics. By combining multiple data points and providing the authorities with a single source of truth, data analytics helps wildlife management strategies become more efficient while also providing greater visibility into what's going on the ground. Now, here are some examples. In 2007, several Chinese internet, internet giants, including Baidu, Alibaba, and Tencent, started an alliance to pool their technologies to take actions against the illegal wildlife trade online. A program, they made a program called AI Guardian that can recognize images of illegal wildlife products like elephant ivory, tiger, canine tooth, skin, claws, and pangolian scale and claw with 75% accuracy. Uh, here is another example, Google's that is Google's Wildlife Insight project that uses AI and cloud technology automatically to process images of wildlife and sensor data, and then to identify animals in images and removing blank images. It aids policymakers with accurate and quality insights. Uh, now here is an, another example. In UK, in UK as Part of a series of its global conservation initiatives, Y has developed a artificial intelligence technology for the project, working with animals experts to identify the red squirrel. They made a custom built listening device, custom built listening device installed in and that installed in the squirrel habitats. The telltale signals of red squirrel activities are monitored by these guardian devices. Then the data is transmitted to researchers at the University of Bristol. Scientists use the data to build up a picture of the ecosystem and help protect squirrel numbers. Uh, now over to Isika. Over. So thank you, Rohit. It's the high time to ask ourselves the most fundamental question, not the how the technology should be built, but how it should actually be used. How we human beings can grow and prosper without destroying our own ecosystem. Our aim is to make an AI-based system that will help the planetary scale data just near the people's fingertips. The motivation behind using the AI for such things is AI has grown, made GDP 4.4% increase and job opportunity by 40 million. We need a great collaboration between scientists, engineers to minimizing the environmental impacts and maximizing the global human experience. So here we come to the end of our presentation. Here are some references uh, that we have collected some data. So thank you all for listening to us. If you have any question you can ask, we'll try to answer them all. Thank you. Okay, what is infrared sensor and how it works? Infrared sensor. sensor. And why infrared sensor is used uh, for that cases?
হ্যালো 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 এটা কি তোমার জানা যে হোয়াট ইজ ইনফারেট সেন্সার and uh, why infrared sensor is used for that purpose and uh, how it works can the infrared sensor ta ki amon actually infrared sensor use korte ami to jani je there are lot of sensor in our environment but why particularly infrared sensor is using for that purposes for wildlife as well as the tumra je ta bolle aro je tinte process ti process e keno why infrared sensor হচ্ছে <laughs> কার্বন জেনে রাখবে কার্বন ডাইঅক্সাইডের